ready for the next session. Excited to announce Tohib Okenla, staff software engineer from Granger, here to talk about building for the middle of nowhere. Give it up for Tohib. Cool. Can you guys hear me? Thumbs up? All right, good, good, good. All right, so my name is Tohib Okenla. Um, if I get too loud, just give me like a thumbs down or something. Um, I'm the engineering lead on, um, on uh, our AI and vision group at Granger. Um, and today I'll be, talking, uh, I'll be talking to you about building for uh, you know, those towns where you drive by and there's like one, one cell tower for the, whole, for the whole town, you know, on a road trip or something. Or, you know, if you're ever in Chicago, these thick metal buildings, concrete and metal buildings that you walk into and you just, all your signal gets jammed. I'm um, talking about building for the middle of nowhere. And by middle of nowhere, I mean areas um, which, for various reasons, there's low to no connectivity. Um, and the interesting thing, actually, is that most, kinda, most of the U.S. usually, most of the U.S. actually sits in low or no, no connectivity um, areas and zones, be it situationally or artificially. So we'll be talking a little bit about that. But before we get into the weeds, I want to set just a little more context about Ranger. Um, so Granger is the leading um, maintenance, uh, the leading distributor of maintenance, repair, and operation products and services um, in the B2, B2B space in North America. So um, what we do is offer some of the most comprehensive um, inventories and in industries uh, for our customers with products ranging from, you know, safety equipment, uh, maintenance supplies, power tools, pretty much everything a business needs to, to run. Um, and one of our strongest value propositions is, uh, is our commitment to providing exceptional service to our customers. And many of our services actually involve this end-to-end -end kind of management of our customers' inventories. That means that many of our team members um, are deployed all over North America um, uh, at different customer locations, providing this kind of hands-on inventory management. And so part of our work um, in the Granger and AI, AI and Vision group, uh, identify opportunities for innovation um, in this space and then to build and deliver these solutions at scale. Um, and we found actually this, this often means these solutions um, uh, often needs to happen at the edge because of our use. We'll go a little bit more of that. Um, so that brings us into the topic for today, which is kind of personal computing, mobile computing. Um, and I want to kind of take us back, cast our minds back to um, times when personal computing meant being confined to a physical location. So some of us in here are, are old enough to remember computer cafes. This is when personal computers were um, relatively still expensive to own and internet access wasn't as widely available. Um, and so for a small fee, you can get your uh, coffee and your uh, computing done at the same time. Um, and then kind of PCs became a little bit more aff affordable and internet access became a little bit more available. Um, so your computing needs could be met right, right in the comfort of your, of your own home. And if you're like me or your, uh, my family, your family had a, you know, a, a room for your computer. You had a computer room where you would house your, your computer. Um, so you could meet those computing needs right at home. And then came even smaller computers and faster computers, and then they, they became small enough to be able to kind of carry around, sort of. Um, I know some of you guys, you know, have these like large machines you can lug around. Um, and then we want to fast forward to today, um, and you have, um, make sure this advance here, have kind of PCs moving from the desks to our pockets, um, and then even to our wrists, and, and you know, very recently to our faces. For many industries, um, advancements kind of redefined and are still redefining the way work is completed um, and the way value is delivered. Um, and it's really exciting time uh, right now. With these new kind of possibilities come from some serious challenges. And um, one thing is with today's desktops at home, physical kind of desktops at home, barring any ISP challenges, um, you can pretty much kind of guarantee uh, that you're going to have connectivity, especially if you're, if you're hardwired in. However, with kind of more personal uh, computers or mobile devices, um, you can't control where um, your customers use your 
application. Um, oftentimes, uh, we have users using these devices kind of in and out of dead spots um, in highly congested network areas where latency is an issue, um, or in the most kind of extreme circumstance, uh, in, in the literal middle of nowhere where there's no connectivity, um, whatever that might be. And so um, there, there are costs that um, are associated with these kind of um, inconsistency in connectivity. Um, they don't come for free, one of them being, hey, now you're trying to deliver this value, this, uh, this feature or product, and in that, you have to build in this retry mechanism uh, because you know, you, um, your customers might uh, kind of have access to connectivity. Um, or you know, you're involving yourself in building conflict, conflict resolution systems. Um, maybe you're you know, bringing the network under the hood, and you know, that's not really part of your business. You're just doing that so, you, so that you can deliver value. Um, and also another big cost is uh, having to build this kind of two separate user experience. Hey, if I'm online, show this. Uh, but if I'm offline, show that's maybe degraded version. Um, or you just maybe prevent users from using that feature entirely. You, you put up a little uh, blocker. Um, and so burning these calories um, can become uh, really, really costly. Costly in the, in the in like time to delivery, um, increased lines of code, which you know, Im implicates time to debug. And then you have this proliferation of comps and wires from UX state. So for one feature, you might have this kind of proliferating amount of comps. So it turns out that the same reason um, that we needed computer cafes, uh, which was this access to connectivity, is oftentimes the same reason difficulty using mobile devices for our value delivery. It's this access, same access to connectivity issue kind of cropping up again, but just in a different way. And so earlier, I um, mentioned that part of Granger's value delivery um, is this sort of on-site inventory management services right at the customer's location. And these customer locations, uh, they're not you know, kind of the fancy headquarters here. We show our Granger um, tech offices there down. They're not this fancy headquarters in the middle of the city. Um, rather, they're these warehouses and distribution centers that they're just not to be in the, in the middle of nowhere. It's like designed to be in, you know, where no one can access it. And so at Granger, we're, we're very familiar with the kind of aforementioned pain points um, around this kind of inconsistent activities. We've, you know, built the retry mechanisms, um, conflict resolution systems, and, and we've dealt with the um, proliferation of kind of multiple designs uh, per state. Um, and in some of our applications, we, we've actually found that the path of least resistance for us is to actually instruct the users, um, these kind of team members of ours that are going everywhere, to manually kind of enter, um, to manually enter um, like this offline state. Um, so, you know, we tell them, hey, you know, when you're, when you're here, we'll, we'll create an offline mode for you and then we'll manage everything locally. Um, and then when you leave and maybe find some stable connection, maybe on your way to your next site or whatever, kick off, we would ask to kick off a sync job. And so we would just kind of do this dance with them. And, and that worked for a while, but what we found was that, um, you know, our users, they're busy and they would forget to sync. Um, or they would forget to click the upload button. Um, and so now we have uh, data that's stale across jobs or across days. Um, and, and now we're kind of tasked to kind of reconcile this stale and um, you know, often complex ma manipulations, which is not, again, core to our application. And so um, you know, we, we found that it led kind of to this overall flakiness of uh, some of our applications. Um, and so you know, if, if you wanted to kind of count our calories and, and, and make them count, um, instead of kind of building these retry systems, um, these conflict resolution mod modules and all this extra UX stuff um, per application that we build. Ideally, we'd like to burn our calories, um, most of our calories on the feature delivery, right? Ideal world. Um, we'd also love to have um, a unified experience. We want to have this um, experience where users can access most, if not all, of the application, um, whether they're online or offline, all of the features. Most, if not all, of the features, right? Um, and then we'd, we'd also like to get all of this um, without having to deal with some cumbersome development process. Um, we don't want to shift the problem from connectivity now to the difficulty to, uh, of dealing with what's supposed to be the solution. 
And so while there are many kind of products out there that offer this kind of easier, um, you know, offline storage management, um, it turns out that a lot of these products are actually more server-centric. They follow a more server-centric paradigm um, and not necessarily a device-centric paradigm. And so what I mean by that is in, in a server-centric appro approach, we have our server here. Um, the server is the source of truth. So the data is not really valid or it's only valid when, once it's reached the server. This means that you know, complex manipulations and mo modification of the, of the data um, that we, we would like to have often requires a regular, my regular connection to the server because most of the kind of syncing logic um, uh, needs that kind of uh, tap to the server uh, every once in a while. And so um, the server, this server-centric approach we realize only offers kind of this offline possible um, experience because at some point, like, there, you know, you can't just be offline for so long, um, whatever so long might be. Um, but we want this offline first application. We want to be able to do what we need to do offline. Um, if, if our uh, team members are at a job and it takes hours or days or whatever, if they happen to be offline for days um, for whatever reason, we want that to be possible. And so in true offline first kind of par paradigm, the device is prioritized as a source of truth um, and changes are then federated to the server when you're online. Um, and I think this is what uh, MongoDB uh, Device Sync, um, you've seen it probably in different talks, offers. De device Sync is kind of designed to handle this bi-directional data synchronization um, uh, between devices, the kind of distributed devices, and the server with each device being considered as a source of truth. And so when the dev device connects to the internet, whenever that is, um, and it does that detection for you, the device behind the scenes automatically kind of syncs as any local changes um, that were made while, while offline. And so this is similar to, in, you know, the, the image should be in front of the, uh, the logo, but just imagine the logo wasn't there. But it's similar to uh, all you can um, eat sushi spot. I don't know if you guys have um, kind of experienced some of that. Um, all you can eat sushi spots, you know, you, maybe you're there with your friends. You can, they give you kind of this paper where you can fill in whatever you need to do. The server might be there, they might, they might not be there. Um, and so um, maybe you're eating and you say, oh, I want more than this. Oh, actually, no, I want to kind of change my order and I want to do this. And then when you're ready, um, the server can then come, uh, or more realistically, and I've actually been to small town uh, sushi spots here where you can take this um, paper up to uh, the server or the desk or the chef. Um, and they, they'll take it and they'll reconcile all your order and kind of give you whatever you need. And so this is more so what um, device thing kind of offers, this um, distributed, um, way of having source of truth and then syncing, syncing them um, in a way uh, that guarantees eventual consistency. Um, they, meaning all clients will uh, eventually kind of convert to an identical state. So you can be off for uh, a very long time um, and then and, and the sync picks it up and handles most of the, um, or all of the kind of synchronization complexities under the hood. And so I also mentioned that earlier, um, I wanted to, to an ideal world, we'd like to do this with having to deal with kind of this uh, cumbersome development process. And so I think uh, we found offers kind of streamline SDKs, you know, you know, in this case, we're talking mobile applications, but um, it can be web applications or just server side applications as well. And these SDKs kind of obfuscate away um, complexities of the offline synchronization. I, so much so, I like to tell this story. I had a team member join my team and and for um, weeks, they, they really didn't know where the data went. Um, it, 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 you know, it just was working. And they didn't have to know where the data went. Uh, it, it, it was just working. And so I was really um, happy to kind of hear that, you know, having a one-on-one -on -one with them and just like, uh, you know, <laughs> where, where is this stuff going? And like, how is it? You know, at that point, we um, kind of KT. It was so refreshing to see that someone can deliver value without actually knowing um, with the complexities of, uh, of an offline first system. And so and that kind of is a good segue into more of our, our, on our use case at Granger. Um, let me pop us over there. OK, so as I mentioned, at Granger, we have these kind of, um, um, we call them on-site specialists uh, to manage our, uh, the inventory at our different customer locations, like I mentioned. And for various reasons, we need to collect um, some of this data in context. In context meaning, meaning that we want to know what and what you know, unit and what c 
cubby and what position and what compartment that, the, that we're talking is in. And so traditionally, we'd have our, our specialists kind of do this process manually. Um, this includes, you know, you, you name the shelf. Um, you know, this, it's eight, eight rows by 10 columns. Um, so that's 80 kind of compartments. So you name each compartment, uh, whether in your Excel sheet, and some people would actually pull out some tape and just kind of put it on each one of them. And then you have these 80, 80 compartments over 40 units in that storage room over 10 storage rooms. Um, and so you can kind of imagine um, how kind of time consuming um, this process can be on our, on our um, uh, specialists. Uh, and then the time consumption is further exacerbated when located conveniently in the middle of nowhere and the internet connection is um, spotty at best. And so this inconsistent connectivity, um, that, you know, the traditional approach to developing at least, um, you know, mobile applications um, not only led to the pain points that I mentioned earlier, but also limited um, the data, the fidelity and the quality of data that we can actually capture um, because they're using the Excel sheets or, um, or you know, what kind of techniques they were using. And so we wanted to both improve the collection experience uh, for our specialists, um, you know, just kind of augmenting, and, and just kind of like a trivial example here, um, augmenting their tedious uh, uh, kind of portions of their collection with uh, some on-device machine learning. And then we also wanted to improve the quality and the fidelity of the information they were collecting. And so we didn't want the low or no connectivity to affect the type of data we're con collecting. And you know, as, as you've probably heard in many talks today, um, I think um, Pradesh earlier today said garbage in, garbage out, right? Like if you, if you collect garbage, you're going to get garbage out. And so we wanted to improve that fidelity. And so we are able to um, deploy uh, on-device on machine learning models uh, at the edge, obviously. Um, in this case, they're mobile devices. Um, and these, uh, these automatically kind of uh, identified the schema of the unit um, that they were collecting and created digital twins. We hear that uh, word a lot, digital twins schema. Um, in Atlas, and with device syncs, um, our specialists could then collect um, all the information, including quality images, um, um, the metadata from the models, and entirely no connectivity, uh, like locations or circumstances, without interruption. And so uh, they also didn't have to, when they left, um, kind of remember to run some upload uh, sync jobs whenever they left the location. This was all done under the hood. And so we like to, I like to joke with us, I think our middle of nowhere um, has now become this connected tropical oasis of, of awesomeness. And so the collected information, you know, obviously is synced to uh, Atlas and with the use of database triggers, you can connect to Kafka topics and downstream services that, that kind of make use of this information. Um, I also did want to highlight um, some additional benefits, more so from a, um, engineering's perspective that I, I found actually really, really valuable. Um, one of them is since the underlying uh, database is Atlas, um, you get all the benefits of As Atlas for free. So you, you sought out to maybe um, build a mobile application or maybe an IoT application that's doing a certain thing. And because uh, the underlying technology you're using sync is just syncing all, a lot of the data you're collecting to Atlas, you're getting um, database triggers. Um, connectors and all these uh, other kind of amazing charts and all this kind of uh, analytic based uh, um, thing out of the box from, from uh, device sync. And so these services or, or entities that are entirely decoupled from your application um, can make use of the data immediately um, that you're collecting. So that's one big thing. Um, and and this, the, uh, the other thing I'd like to really, really put um, some emphasis on is because the source of truth is the device, what you end up with is a database schema and a consumption structure that is best suited for the device. And that seems kind of trivial, but um, if you've spent some time in a mobile space or in maybe just a non-web space, you realize that too often kind of mobile devices, uh, they APIs that, that are structured in non-optimal ways. And so, for example, a lot, a lot of, you know, for a long time application meant web application. And so, you know, in web circumstances, you have larger real estate, and so maybe you might have an API that delivers bo both a main view for you and then like detail view right next to each other, and you can click, but you can see everything at first. 
uh, at the same time. But for mobile devices, that the real estate is smaller. So maybe you're showing the main page first, and then you click into it and you show the detail page. Um, well, traditionally, you ha you'd have your mobile device kind of consume the same API from the web, and this, uh, the data would be structured in such a way where everything's delivered at once, everything over the wire at once. And that's obviously introducing latency issue, and if you're in the middle of nowhere, or if, you're, if your users can be in, in low connectivity, you can have transport issue, all these different things. Or vice versa, um, you have scenarios where, you know, hey, we, we love microservices. Microservices are nice now, and so my website has the main one in this microservice and this in this microservice and whatever. And maybe it's structured in this way. But for, for the mobile experience, I consolidate everything. Maybe I, I, I don't want to show a main and a detailed view. I want to just have everything kind of quickly consolidated because of the real estate scenario. Now, I'm, now on the mobile device, I'm chaining calls together or building a BFF in a way that chains all the calls together. And so all this extra overhead is kind of done away with because the device is the Customer. So your, your data is structured in a way um, that the device wants it the most. And so that's a really, really big uh, takeaway from that. And so kind of wrapping up pretty soon here. Um, I think, um, you know, I was just thinking while it, it's, it's easy to get kind of caught up in a lot of the, you know, we heard LLMs and Gen AI and all this like really cool stuff. And even in the computing space, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening. And it's easy to kind of you know, get caught up assignment. Um, but I think one thing we have to remember is that um, our products are only going to be successful if our users can use them consistently. Um, and so, um, you know, I want to echo what Naf, who's one of our engineering VPs, um, what he tells our teams, he says, hey, the, the equation has changed. Um, uh, before the equation was the big fish eating the small fish, right? This is like the big corporation, kind of plenty of resources. Yeah, it's painful to develop, but whatever, we have the resource, and so they win because they, they have the resources. Um, but, but the equation is to the fast fish eating the slow fish, namely the, 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 the entities and the companies that solve those pain points the fastest and can get, the market, get to market and deliver value the fastest. Those are the ones who win. And so I believe that's what kind of device sync offers. At the end of the day, um, by addressing some of the biggest pain points when it comes to personal computing or mobile computing, especially as IoT and all these things proliferates, by addressing that connectivity issue and effectively being able to de de uh, deliver value anywhere, regardless of the connectivity, um, I think all uh, uh, these teams and, and companies uh, opportunities to deliver these values faster. That at the end of the day, that's what you're buying. Using faster delivery, you're getting faster delivery and more consistent delivery. And so, before I, I finish, and I'm effectively done, poll the audience, um, and the question I have is, what might be inaccurate or wrong with this picture that you might feel? Maybe slightly inaccurate. The fast fish is the small one? You're right, exactly. Big fish can be really fast, too. And so that's what I'll leave you guys with. That's, I'm done. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, any questions? In the Q&A, I'm here to answer. I think they got to yeah. pipe okay. you in real quick. Uh, is there any situation with multiple devices? Oh, uh, with multiple devices? Could you start over? Sorry. Yeah. Have you run into situations with multiple devices uh, that are offline where you have to reconcile? offline yeah. before yeah. they get to the server? And what does that look like? Right, yeah. So device sync, and I'm sure there are experts here that can. So if you didn't hear, he asked, um, have, I, have I run into a situation where you have multiple devices that have been offline for arbitrary amount of time, and then you have to kind of reconcile what they have? With device sync, you actually get you know, strong eventual consistency. It's not, it's not a, I didn't just make that term. It's an actual standard. And so um, what that means is, um, Number one, all the devices are going out of the box, going to end up at the same state. Um, but I think for maybe more um, complex scenarios, you can actually uh, write in some of your, um, uh, you can add in custom sync logic and custom um, reconciliation logic. Um, and so if you can determine how your offline devices kind of um, end up in the state they end up in. So I think that's really cool too. For us, we've, we found the out of the box 
um, eventual consistency to be good enough. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Cool. Thank you, guys. <laughs>